Hello everyone, this is Aaron McDonald, Technical Support Manager here at Pangolin Laser Systems. We're live here in the Pangolin Studio, and in today's Pangolin tutorial video, I will be showing you more about zones, answering some of the most common questions we get from clients like, what is a zone? What does a zone allow me to do? How do I set up a zone in Quick Show Beyond or LD2000? How do I control these zones and use them to create better laser light shows? A zone is essentially a command from Pangolin software that tells a laser projector which content from the software you want to be displayed in a given area. So to begin, I will ask you to watch a short clip from the following laser light show, which provides an excellent demonstration of what a zone is and how controlling zones can help you create better laser light shows. In the previous video, you may have noticed that the same laser projector is sending output to different areas. For example, at times it is projecting atmospheric effects in a certain area, and other times it is projecting beam effects in a different area. Each of these different areas is called a zone, and inside of Pangolin software, you can create multiple zones for your laser projectors and have different content displaying in those zones, thus creating better, more advanced laser light shows as a result. For now, let's jump inside of Beyond and show you how to set up zones inside the software. One thing we will note is that while we are doing the demonstration with Beyond, the same principles apply in both QuickShow and LD2000. In this example, I am using two laser projectors and two FB3QS units. You will notice that during my example that we can have multiple zones set to a single projector so that one laser projector can display content in multiple areas. To set up the projection zones, you will go to the projection zone settings found under the Settings drop-down at the top of the Beyond interface. Notice that most of the zones are defaulted to Projector 1, as you can have multiple zones set to a single projector, and notice where you can change the hardware controller that is set the, to the specific zone via the drop-down menu. One thing to remember is that you are deciding what controller is set to what projection zone. This is up to you how you want to set this up. The way I am setting it up, in my example, is arbitrary. You can choose to do it the same way, or you can choose any of the zones already in the list, or make up your own zone based on your, pre your preferences. I will be using main graphics, secondary graphics, and atmospherics in my example. As you can see, main graphics is already set to projector 1, and projector 1 is assigned to flashback 3, 591, 91. I will be setting secondary graphics to go to projector 2. To do this, you, you highlight the secondary graphics and then go to the drop down. I will be setting this to projector 2, which is assigned to FB3, 591, 88. To check that this has been set up, you can click on one of the two checkboxes beside the zone you are setting to get a test pattern. If you click on one of the boxes next to all the zones you are setting up, you should see the test pattern on all your laser projectors. Each test pattern will have the number set to that zone in the middle of the pattern so you know which laser is going to what zone. As you can see we have three zones set up here using two projectors. Zones 1 and 4 are going to projector 1 tied to FB3 59191 and zone 5 is going to projector 2 tied to FB3 QS 59188. If you need to change the size, shape, or position of your zone you will do this in the Geometric Correction tab. You will see several adjustments that can be made, and you will also notice that you have the option to make changes using a freeform mesh. For quick adjustments, the freeform mesh is great. You will just grab specific corners of that and drag them to where you want. For finer adjustments, you can use the traditional geometric correction adjustments.
click OK, the OK button to accept the new projection zone assignments. Now you are ready to set up different aspects of Beyond so that laser frames are sent to all your projection zones. You can do this in at least three ways. Firstly, you can set individual workspace cues to go to specific or multiple zones. This would mainly be for live shows where you are only using the workspace cues and not a pre-programmed timeline show. To do this, you right-click on a workspace queue and select Queue Properties. Under the Queue Properties General tab, you will see two boxes, Selected Destinations and Available Destinations. Notice that the main graphics is already assigned to this queue as it is in the Selected Destination box. You will then click on the zone you want the frame to go to from the Available Destination box for example, we will use secondary graphics, and then click the arrow pointing to the left to add it to the selected destination list of zones the frame will go to. Click Close to accept this change and close the Queue Properties box. Now clicking on that queue should send the laser frame to both the projection zones you set it to. You can also view this on the software's preview window. Secondly, you can set individual timeline tracks to go to specific or multiple zones. This is to send all the workspace cues you have put on a timeline track to the zones you have set for that individual timeline track. To do this, you will open up the Timeline Editor window by clicking the Timeline button at the top left of the Beyond interface. Note, if you do not change the track properties, any workspace queue you drag to that track will go to the projection zones set in that queue's properties by default. For example, the queue we changed above would go to both projection zones I set it to, main graphics and secondary graphics. To route a timeline track to a different zone, right-click on a small space under the track number you want to change and choose track properties. Again, track properties will override queue property settings. After opening the track properties, click the second tab, Projection Zones, and then click the Edit button. This will pull up a box just like the Queue Properties box that has a selected and available destination boxes. This time, notice that no zones are assigned to this track. You will then click on the zones you want the frame to go to, just like we did for our queue example above. Then click the left arrow to move it to the Selected Destinations box. Select OK to close the Zone Selection box, and click OK to accept this change and close the Track Properties box. To test this, you will drag the Timeline Location bar along the timeline and watch the preview window to the right. Note, the two workspace queues I am working with are set to go to the atmospheric zone by default. At first, track one is going to the two zones, main and secondary graphics, which we set it to go to. As I get to where track two has a laser frame, you will see the atmospheric preview window is now showing the output from track two as the queue is displaying is set to go to the atmospheric zone, while track one is only being displayed on the main graphic and secondary graphic zones. Lastly, you can set individual timeline events to go to specific or multiple zones. Every queue you drag to the timeline is considered an event. To change the projection zone for a timeline event, you would click on the event and notice the event tab to the right under the preview window has expanded with options. The third option is transitions and projection zones. Note that the projection zone showing is the projection zone already assigned to the workspace queue from within the queue properties, in this case, atmospheric events. Just like in the track properties box, click on the edit button. Again, notice that the atmospheric effects zone is within the selected destination box. I will remove it by pressing the right arrow key. I will then click on the zones I want the event to go to 
I will use the main graphics and secondary graphics zones again for our example. Then click the F left arrow key to move it from the available destinations to the selected destinations. Select OK to accept this change and close the event properties box. To test this, I will drag the timeline locator bar along the timeline. As I drag it through the timeline, you will see track 1 going to the main and secondary graphic zones that I set earlier. The event on track 2 going to the atmospherics effect zone per its Q properties, and track 3 is going to the main and secondary graphics per the timeline event properties I just changed. The key to this zone assignment is that it is only for this event. If that event ends and you put a new event on the timeline, it will be displayed to the, to the zone that the new event's Q properties are set to, or where the timeline track is assigned to. Each of these options should be explored so you can determine which option best suits your specific show. That was a brief introduction to projection zones. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at pangolin.com. Take care, and we'll see you next time.